What did you learn with Zerka? You know, this Zerka brings you to closer to God, right? Right? Because you just film atheists. They're ugly. You know, they bring people to God anyway. So anyways, one thing I am sad about is I spent a lot of time last year reading books that are kind of not related to business, which I have to stop now. So I got sad about that. I, I read a lot, dude. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, dude. It's like I always found it stupid when people read books that don't make them money. But I needed to know some of that stuff, you know. I'm sure I'll bring it in podcasts, but uh, I think last year I read over, easily over 30 books. And some of, most of them I read twice, three times. So I was blazing through. That was the weirdest, the first time in my life I ever started reading was last year. That was, I, there was like this surge of God flowing through me, God's spirit. And yeah, I don't know. It was like reading became like, again, I want to say because there's no content online, reading became like, oh shit, I'm getting content that no one has. You know, like if you're that bored, you eventually go to books, you know, something's fucked up with the website. <clears throat> I feel like COVID assassinated everyone's mental health. So nobody's creating shit. And really they're creating dog shit before, you know, I kind of miss the competition. So I'm going to take over this bitch and sucks that I don't have hobby reading time. Cause like, dude, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Some of the best alone time I've ever had in my life. Imagine me of years ago saying this, I would not, I was reading kind of close to the same stuff, but not really dude. The best alone time I had 2022 was reading all that Masonic literature right because these guys will go out their way to prove god it's not like this whole sam harris debate against some fucking theist these guys you will never it's like using the devil to prove god it's unreal what i was doing and uh yeah some of those arguments were like uh, you know there's always like this doubt you know you struggle with faith you're like oh maybe atheists have a point like maybe two percent and then you read all that demonic shit and you go, man, these fucking demons break down God into like, uh, you can't debate it. So I guess it was good for my faith that I read that stuff. But I, was, I also read a lot of satanic shit. And I'm not going to lie. I, you, there was this guy in chat saying, if you read all this shit, Zerka, does it pour into your life? I actually think it does. Not you, but someone who's an angry guy, wrathful guy like me. There was like a lot of moments where it's like the stuff I was reading, I started to... Uh, it started happening to me. It was like, whoa. And yeah, it was just insane. It was like conjuring shit. But it strengthened my resolve. Like I know what I'm at war with. And it's so addictive to read those kind of books. But again, if it's not for my YouTube channel, I'm not doing it this year. And uh, I'm not sure that stuff will come to play in podcasts. You know, it's always an interesting topic. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the books I recommend, Mystic Masonry, anything Manny P Hall, which which is scary because I got messages saying, Yozurka, I'm I'm kind of troubled how much I agree with Freemasons. And I'm like, Yeah, most of it is common sense. You're gonna agree with eighty percent of it. But there are times where they say I'm intentionally misleading you. And then they say uh brotherhood over truth. They say stuff that you know is like God doesn't like. But a lot of the stuff you're going to just be like shook with how much like you read. Anytime a human reads Masonic literature, it's literally stuff that you nod along with 99%. Like you, it's scary how much you agree with. Dude, you could be an atheist, agree with them. You could be a spiritual guy, agree with them. I, they don't leave room for you to argue. It's terrifying how smart these guys are. It's like, but then again, they do give you like ways out where you're like, you know what? Truth is more important than Masonic Brotherhood. What the fuck? You know? Um, but yeah, reading that stuff really made me start to think about uh, the gayest shit in the world. Force fields. Did you know there's electromagnetic force fields that these guys would write 
thousand pages on and then you're like who are they these are like the biggest names in history writing about this why the fuck are they writing thousands of pages of electromagnetic auras and it's like why are they talking about that if it's uh old science like destiny would say it was it's like mind-boggling this stuff they talk about and I spent way too much time last year. Like, I even ditched a lot of streams just to read about this stuff because there's some weird thing I have where I can't read a book if it's not from the ruling class. You know what I mean? Like, I I will never read a useful book that is not from the ruling class. You read a mainstream book and you go, oh, it's in the algorithm. It's programming. It's like, you know, they're programming you with this book. But you read a dusty book you find in a library. There is no programming there. There's a lot of truth there. And uh, I had a lot of Christians best for me. They're like, yo, this sounds satanic and stuff. Dude, it actually gets you. If you're smart, you have half a brain. It gets you closer to Christ. Okay. But some people are like, damn, you read more about that stuff than the fucking Bible so hard right and it's true i did yeah 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 I, I was obsessed last year every vacation i took i was reading these books every time i had alone time it was like anytime someone would leave the room instead of me go watch porn i would read these books because i was like if i read it in front of someone i start talking their ear off right but um Yeah, I do regret how much time I spent with these books, though, because it's like, you know, I was acting like I did the work already. You know what I mean? Like, well, I can do that when my library is built. But it is weird because I'm not going to lie to you. I've never read books. I used to like, yeah, a few here and there, but it's like never. If I finish this one, I can go to this one and. Like some obsessive, it's like a coke head with books. And and I thought it was useless until I realized, oh shit, you know, like I don't really talk about what Alex Jones talks about. You know, I talk about some, you know, some stuff you're not going to find online. And that's what, that is your 2023 prescription, my dude. If you want to be a millionaire, go repackage a book into your content. Don't do what I did. Like, go for content that people click on. But um, you have a monopoly in a book, right? Go, do not repackage YouTube videos. Go, you have a monopoly. Nobody reads books. You'll be the first. Oh, yeah. Hey, I appreciate that. Keep that coming because I'm still streaming my ass off, but streaming is light work for me, so I don't count it. Yeah, books are great. The problem is that there's a lot of business books I'd recommend, but there's no point to recommending a book if you don't have interest. Like, I'm not reading these kind of books. I'm reading about Freemasons because it's obsessive in my head. I'm like... Wait a minute. So all those base channels, there's Jackson Hinkle who finally changed his tone and mentions Freemasons in his new YouTube video. Finally. It fucking took him years. But I was like, I can't watch Andrew Tate because Andrew Tate has no idea what the fuck a Freemason is. Even if he's a part of them, he doesn't really get it. No one can define what a Freemason is in this fucking chat. Even if you Google it, you're going to get it wrong. And I'm like, dude, if I can't, how the fuck is the only variable of the ruling class that they're all Masons, Bonesmen, Rosicrucians, how is that the only missing variable that no fucking channel talks about? Not Alex Jones, not Jackson Inkle, not Haas, Infrared Show, not, no channel, not Andrew Tate, no channel talks about that shit. And then I realized, oh, you have to read 
to know about this shit and nobody wants to actually fucking read and then i you know i was like curious so i opened these books dude these books are easy to consume not albert pike but all the even albert pike's what's that other book series he has that one's better but these books are very easy to digest i think everyone should start with manny p hall and first watch his biogra- uh, audio biography or whatever, some documentary on his lifestyle. Dude, I'll show you this fat bitch talking about him. He would have arguments with like Harry Houdini and Houdini would be a materialist and he'd be like, no, there's no, uh, there's no demons in this world. There's no demons in this world. Uh, it's just illusions. And then Manny P. All, who's the genius right in town, like the super genius, what you call look at his accomplishments. He's like, no, no, I believe that there is something about conjuring spirits and all that, and I'm going to keep investigating. And then he fucking writes books about demonology and shit. Are you fucking telling me this genius, that this is like one of the greatest authors of all time, he has books on demonology, and he has like weird shit he says too, like, you'll be agreeing with everything he says, and then he goes, we know how to cure a common cold. You just put a piece of fur in your left pocket. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't buy that shit. So sometimes I would be reading these books like every now and then. I'd be like, okay, that's enough for me to stop reading. But 99% of it is shit you cannot debate. Like it's genius level shit. And uh, yeah, Manny P. P. Hall is a good start. But uh what a weird life he lived. And he died through a satanic ritual. Like, nobody knows he got killed. How come nobody talks about the fact that he got fucking sacrificed? Like, you start running with demons and they just fucking sacrifice your shit? Also, another thing. Is it Jack Parsons for Scientology? Dude. There's no movies on this. Very few books on this, but... Every single dude obsessed with demons runs a billion dollar industry. So how the fuck are you blaming me for not running great podcast 2022 because I'm too busy reading this stuff? I need to know. I need to know. I'm thinking to myself like there's nothing fucking. Shut the fuck up, bro. I'm talking. Bro, come on. Mason is a man who dedicates himself to a craft or further themselves in finding the truth, correct? Wrong. He dove into the fall of Metatron slash Enoch. Wrong. Wrong. That's not what Freemason is. Freemasonry is, this is Albert Pike, this is not my opinion. It's a religion based on old esoteric teachings, hermetic teachings, which means sealed. Uh, and they all line up perfectly with Manny Peel Hall, who said, the saving powers of Lucifer are in your hands. Then he says, applying energy. You become a true Mason when you can apply energy through the hands. Uh, it's called Dynamo, like that famous occultist uh, Houdini type dude uh, that we saw. And then uh, they talk about Lucifer and everyone and their mom is saying, John, they mean a secular atheist world. And there is some truth to it because I think in page like 853, there's like a thousand pages to that one. He says that, um, and this was interesting to me because the first commandment is you shall not have any gods before me, correct? One in the chat if that's correct. Okay, so no idol tree. So the Grand Wizard, the Pope of Masonry, Albert Pike, in page 800 and something, he says, he says, um, what was I saying? <laughs> the fuck was I saying before that? <sighs> Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, right. The, the, right. So, ye shall have no gods before me, right? Albert Pike says on page 800 something, he says, Satan is not a black god. 
It's not like a horned God. It's not like on par with God. He says, <laughs> Satan, and I can get you the quote. He says, Satan is the negation of God, which leads people to nihilism and idol worship. Meaning the human psyche has two options. There's no third. Like there's destiny types who think there's a third. There is no third, dude. This is why having God in your life is so important. Dude, even if you have to pretend to believe in God, it's so important, right? Trust me on that. Trust me on that. P pretenders do better than the non-pretenders, right? Eventually it starts to like uh, synchronize. But check this out. He says that the negation of God is what satan is and really what he's saying is and he goes into it deeper i'm not like interpreting it he actually says this if you don't have god in your life it's not a blank slate you're not andrew uh, callahan five five news network guy if you don't have god in your mind you have idol worship that's why the first commandment is you will not have, have no gods before me. Now check this out. What check this out? What this fucking genius who's like achieving psychic states to like even give us this message, right? Here's what he's saying. All my life, I thought you can have God and some middle ground and then atheism, right? There is no fucking middle ground. There is no middle ground. Like this guy writes down that he writes down in his book, there's no middle ground. That's fucking terrifying news to agnostics in chat. That means you don't even know who you're idol worshiping, but you're doing it. And one thing nobody talks about, like pastors are fucking retarded. And, you know, a lot of spiritual leaders are fucking retarded because they don't talk about this. But idol worship isn't, oh, I really like Dwayne Johnson. You switch idols depending on your mood. Meaning you're sinning hard, bro. You are like switching it up all the time. You're They're running a train on you. That's what nobody talks about. It's like you can have a thousand of them. So in this book, he says that Satan worshipers would be those nihilists who don't have God. And I'm like, huh, is that a stretch? Well, you look at the you look at an atheist life. It's not it's kind of rare you see them married with kids in a functional home. And then you go, "Oh, maybe there is something to this." You understand? Anyways, I thought that was interesting because uh, you know, I've done a lot of reading last year and it all sticked it all stuck in my head. All the reading I did stuck in my head for the first time in my life. Because it's not liberal propaganda and it's not conservative propaganda, which there's heaps. It's actually a diagnosis on the human condition. And it's my it's mind blowing I'm coping hard because I'm really thinking I wasted a lot of time. Like my brother's like, you finished a thousand book, a thousand pages book five times. That doesn't make you money, John. And I was like, yeah, but it really strengthens my God argument. And he's like, for who, who do you debate? I'm like, nobody for me. And he's like, oh, and that's going to help you. I'm like, fuck yeah, it's going to help me with the fuck. But he's really mad at me. Cause he's like, you know, you're a smart guy and you're not, you're kind of wandering. So yeah, I got to prove some shit to him, I guess. And I, I guess I'm going to sneak in some books here and there. But I love, dude, every morning I wake up and someone DMs me a better book, dude. And it's like wild because they'll send me one page and I might be the only human on earth who reverse engineered uh, Freemasonry to God. The greatest argument for God is reading these satanic fucking people's work is the greatest argument they they they're not even shy about it dude like they make the argument perfect crystal clear for you 
So I did a bunch of cocaine. And I read a lot of books. I didn't know you can use cocaine like that. I always thought it was like, yeah, let's fucking go to the club and shit. It was weird. I had a weird year. But man, I learned so much. Like, There's something Manny P. Hall said that stuck with me. And some good psychologists understand this. Yo, it's 2023 chat. And l let me tell you something. You spent your whole life experiencing resistance to what you want to do, whether gym, work, whatever. Dude, resistance means you have to change your angle of attack. That's why you're 30 years old and still miserable. You have to, <laughs> you have to tweak something. You got to be a tweaker. And these books, these Freemasons talk about resistance being a universal stopping force. Meaning, dude, if you're spinning your tires and you're not getting your shit done, I almost guarantee you my life, you know what to do. You're just not doing it. I don't know why we have to. I know this channel too. I'm like, if you watch Zerka, you're stubborn and you deal with my sins and you're probably a wrathful person and all that. But dude, it's 2023, meaning when you clean up your room, stop pouting like a whore. Just clean it up casually. Matter of fact, smile. Because all that pouting energy is taking money away from you. It's taking success away from you. And you have no idea that willpower is finite, meaning you start with this much every day. And your best goal is to keep your bar full by 6 p.m. where you can really start going in. If you don't start managing your emotions, man, you could be a millionaire, but your potential was 10. That's a bigger loser than a non-millionaire in my opinion. Now check this out. If you're experiencing resistance, I want to go to the gym, but I can't do it. Follow the greats. The greatest boxer of all time is Floyd Mayweather. And he said something that stuck with me. This is 2023 shit. One in the chat for 2023. This is, this is going to pump you up. He said, I don't give a fuck what jeans I'm wearing. I'm a professional boxer. If I feel like going for a jog in jeans, I will never go upstairs and change and lose, lose out on that energy. Because I might change my mind up there. So he just starts fucking running in his denim jeans. And I'm like, that's what a fucking champion is. He milks every fucking... He's going to run anyway, but he milks those moments. And I'm like, dude, make working out as easy as possible for you. Don't drag feet. I, You know, I'm not going to lie to you, man. Those people who say just go to the gym and wait in the parking lot till you feel like you're in the mood, I don't like that. And those people who are like just be disciplined, I don't like that either because here's the truth. One good workout a week is better than three bad ones. Calorie-wise, afterburn-wise, metabolic-wise, um, even uh, the tears you cause to your muscle fibers, everything is bigger. So if you start seeing workouts five days a week as dots on the calendar, you, you failed because some are giant dots. Some are circles. Some are spheres. Some workouts are huge. Some workouts are the biggest ever, right? So you got to kind of like, if you have a huge workout, you can kind of set up for a break day strategically. And I used to tell my clients this. I'm like, I would never tell you how to bench press unless I'm sitting next to you because biomechanically everyone's different. But why are you thinking psychoactively everyone's the same? Psychoactively, everyone is different. And if you're like, oh, I can't go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. Look, sometimes you want to drag feet, but if you are ever experiencing resistance where it's weeks and weeks and weeks of dragging feet, my dude, 
you're a fucking retard. Like one in the chat if you're a retard. You're 25, 35, 45. You're, you've been doing everything wrong your whole life. It's 2023. You've been doing everything. How the fuck are you 30 years old and still a fat dude experiencing resistance from diet, from training? How's that possible? Are you serious? It's always a different angle of attack. That's always the mindset. Another thing is, look at the greatest of all time. Their work is actually play. Whether boxers, fighters, businessmen, there's this weird thing at the top of successful people where they're not grinding. They're playing. You see, even YouTube creators at the at their peak, it looks like play to them. It's not forced, and if it is forced, it's not their top viewers. Car donated forty four dollars. Definitely not. God bless this brother, Allahu Akbar. So every day there's a stream, like a river. We'll call that river flow, and you can only get on that canoe if you have a good mindset if you're not emotional or if you have forward emotion like i don't think emotion's bad if it's forward if it takes you to the gym and stuff right but i really think it's always you know drowning you instead now check this out every day there's this river stream you're supposed to get on this flow state you've been missing out on this river your whole life and you only remember the moments you were having fun on it. You know, oh, my life was so great in 2012, 2015. Success is a science, dude. Success is a science. And here's what it is. If you write down all of, let's say, your streams or whatever, what you did right, what you did wrong, log them. If you write down everything you ate, you logged what you ate, all your activity levels throughout the week, you can see your failure weeks and what the habits were. You can see that it's like, hey, I missed the gym, which spoiled my mood. And you can see the, the after effects of one failure. And dude, if there's such thing as one failure, we'd all be billionaires. But there's no such thing as one. One failure means 30 in one day. That shit snowballs fast. I think most of us can deal with a failure. We can't deal with the snowballing effect. Yeah. Another thing for 2023 that's going to help you guys. Never fucking multitask. That is the fucking retard's work ethic. multitasking you've done it your whole life and you're a loser did it really work bro be honest did it work for you or did it just leave a billion tabs open and you never got anything done you're a fucking retard i don't even care if it's if it's a non-important issue it still comes before the important issue just because chronologically you're on that issue close the fucking drawers in your life and then get to the bigger drawers. Don't leave every drawer open thinking you're going to slam them shut at the same time. I'm telling you, dude, the system is designed to make you ADHD. Don't don't feed into that. That's a B system. Multitasking does not work for anything. It doesn't work at the gym, drop sets, supersets, none of it. Okay? The best shape my clients got into was just hitting their fucking lifts. It wasn't fucking supersetting and doing dunkle jumping rope shit. So don't multitask. Multitasking is, I mean, nobody talks about multitasking because they assume you're doing it. No, it's a bad thing. It's ruining you. And you've been multitasking your whole life because it's easy. It's the easy thing to do. There's nothing easier than multitasking, right? Multitasking is half wins and failures. There's no real wins. 
And if there is a win, you're supposed to have 30 that week, not one. So I'm telling you, one at a time, and that goes to my next point. You need a checklist, bro. You need a checklist. You are designed to be a soldier of God. You need a checklist. <laughs> if you don't have a checklist, dude, you are a failure. You will be a failure if you don't have a checklist. You need a checklist, and the checklist cannot get dull. It needs to update every two days. It can't be just a paper on the wall. That's fucking retarded. You need to interact with it. You need to write down shit on it. You need to circle shit. You need to change it. Even if it's perfect and you're doing it right, you need to change it. It has to be something that you talk to. It has to be animated. Because, dude, if you don't have a checklist, you're not going to war without a checklist, dude. No one does that. If you're the kind of guy who can just wing it, I could just wing it and get an A+. plus. <laughs> Here's what you're really saying. Anyone who looks you in the eye and says, I could just wing it and get an A+, plus, John. What you're really saying is, John, I was supposed to go to Harvard by now, but I'm winging shit. Just because you're winning doesn't really mean you're at the top. There could be a bigger top for you. You know, you're a bottom. Another thing is, you need to start taking notes as drawings. Humans are designed to interpret symbols. It's a lost language, but your notes are supposed to be for you. No one else can read them. Take notes. I'm not saying for school, okay? If you want to take notes for school, you can have a couple hundred thousand. If you take notes for your life, you'll be a millionaire. Take notes and make them into schizo scribbles you need to have symbols okay another thing is check this out every time you write down on a notebook something you're supposed to do it re reinforces it in your brain like a muscle like an elastic kind of muscle my dude the last time your brain worked was when you took notes in grade school and you took notes for no money. Now you have money in your life. Like now if you take notes, you have serious money. Like why did you take notes for free? You took notes on topics that are not for you. Another thing, probably the biggest one, stop thinking Stop psyching yourself out when you learn something. Every time you learn something new, you say to yourself, uh, people understand this better than me. No, they don't. Most people don't fucking understand it better than how you just learned it, you fucking retard. You undercut yourself every time. My dude, every time you say, yeah, so I learned this software, but there's people who know it better than me, and I'm, I just, uh, maybe I don't really understand it and stuff. Dude, pay the fuck attention, okay? Chances are you're probably in the top 1% who knows that shit. And you just put a little more focus and that's it. Another thing, stop thinking there's knowledge outside of your grasp. Like, oh, this is genius level stuff. I can't learn this. My dude. Yes, there might be like a lot of stuff you cannot learn. But and when you take a crack at it, you go like, for example, I was like, I'm not reading this kind of fucking Masonic literature and this. I'm not a reader. I've never read. And then it turns out it's not that I'm a smart guy that I remember everything I read. It's that, oh, shit, my brain's open to it. My brain wants this. Oh, my brain's open to it. Fuck it. And it just poured the fuck in. It poured the fuck in. I was like, holy shit. Why did it pour in when I was in school? That would have been nice. So sometimes your brain is like has a hole, right? And it's ready for new information. But because you think you're a retard, you don't even click. You don't open the book. You don't do it. It's like, dude, some days, for example, morning time, there's something about men at, in morning time. 
you can learn so much in the morning. Even if you go back to bed, you turn on something, you learn it so much better in the morning, right? So every morning I'm like, oh, finally I open my eyes. I get to absorb something. Even in your subconscious, it's insane, dude. Not going to lie. Middle of the day, I can't learn shit. So I just use it for work. Can't do it. So you should know your times. Um, yeah. Also, another thing from that Masonic literature, I I read that humans are solar beings and not just for the sun, for the stars and the moon as well. So apparently you function better if you get sunlight, not on some hippie shit, not on some, I got some vitamin D on some like, bro, some electromagnetic shit. So get some fucking sun, dude. Like sun is big. I'm saying like two hours a day. And another thing you don't do is your brain automatically goes to, oh, I got to be in front of my computer. Bro, just turn your fucking data on. It's worth the money and go for a walk in the sun and do whatever you're doing on your computer at walking. It's worth the money, bro. It is worth it because it's building momentum in your life. Another thing about momentum is, right? Would you make a good student if you went back to uni for something? No, I doubt it. No, no, no. There's no, no. Imagine the topics, right? I doubt it. Uh, but I would do a bunch better than last time. Um, but yeah, the topics are just too boring. Yeah, I don't think so. <clears throat> now check this out though, right? The topics you find interesting, your brain is, it has a monopoly on that shit. So if you find NBA interesting and you open up a YouTube channel talking about the NBA, dude, you have a monopoly to millions of dollars right there. So people think, oh, I find stuff interesting. It's a distraction. Not really. It's your calling, bro. It's like you got to be so stupid to have a passion that's not monetized. Not eh, the passion, the, the one, not all of them. <clears throat> So yeah, yeah. The things you watch all day are actually kind of like poking at you to be successful. You you got to like pay attention to that. Another thing, okay? Just cut out your fucking friends. Bro. Like I don't care. Just cut them out. I'd rather you be lonely than have fucking loser friends, man. I don't give a fuck about this take. I know it's like post-COVID, everyone's lonely and shit. Just cut them out, okay? That's, you know, the, the, your friends will Snapchat you a dead body type shit. Like, they're not going where you're going. They're not even trying, dude. What about your brothers? <sighs> Look, man. Brothers are good, goaded and all that, but anything giving you comfort is taking away from that pressure that makes you successful. Success doesn't follow the slob. And if you're around your parents, brothers, and stuff like that, you become slob-like. You become like a, I'll get it done tomorrow kind of guy. Because what you don't what you don't understand is like your parents and brothers and stuff they're projecting a lot of their traumas onto you by accident, and you're doing it to them. And it's like, be careful with that shit, you know. Like for example, a lot of people don't understand that you know most students don't actually have ADHD. For example, if you have an acute delayed ADHD at four p.m. It's actually been proven, nobody talks about this, but it's been proven that a lot of students don't finish grade school and high school and then get triggered at 4 p.m. for no reason. It's because their parents are being abusive at 4 p.m. And by abusive, I mean they're like talking to each other with language that penetrates the child because the child starts thinking, whether you like to admit or not, you start to think about the worst. And that's why a lot of people don't have ADHD, but they have a 4 p.m. trigger of ADHD because they're used to 4 p.m. their mom and dad fighting when they came home from high school, right? Or whatever. 
a lot of those kids when they move out, right? Could be your brothers that you argue with, could be whatever. A lot of those kids when they move out, they kind of dominate the world. And I would have a couple of days where when I go see my parents, there was like this um you've done enough energy. Yeah. It was, it's weird. When I talk to my parents, it's always you've done enough. You know what I mean? And I don't remember them being like that. I remember them being like, go out and get the world and grab the world by its fucking throat. And But, you know, they get older. They got that you've done enough energy. And whether you want to admit it or not, that shit is like, I'll even skip some FaceTime calls if I get that energy. Like, I'll just turn off the thing. I'll be like, I can't talk. My phone died. Because, dude... For us conservatives, or whatever we call ourselves now, dude, our parents can penetrate our thoughts. You know, you could be at a, I was at a Christmas party and they just, whom, could be some negative shit. So I'm not shit talking about them. Like, I love, I love being close to them and stuff. I love being close to my brothers and stuff. But man, this pressure I feel where it's like, there's this ambience, there's this silence. It was really sad these last few days, uh, horribly sad, like horrifically sad, because uh, I had to like face some demons, and there's nothing like facing, there's nothing worse than facing a familiar one, you know, where it's like, that's yours, you know that's your demon, and I was like, whoa, I don't think I'm going to call my brother great therapist and all but i'm not gonna call my brother i'm not gonna call anyone what if i just suffer in silence for an answer right and the answer never came and i was like damn but before i'd walk into my brother's room and i'd be like you know i have this issue da, da, da. and yeah there was this caudal energy there's just this like, don't go out and kill yourself, guys, but there's this loneliness is poetic, dude. This loneliness is like, I like it. I like that I can't open a door and be like, hey, Dustin, I need help. And I like that. Yeah, because it's like it squeezes your brain to find an answer. I, I think all, if you have a twin brother, you understand what I'm saying. Like, a lot of twins can get lost in the... You know, but my twin literally kicked me out of the house. He packed everything for me. He's like, get the fuck out. You're wasting your life on Twitch. Go. You're supposed to be bigger than Logan Paul. These people are fucking boring. And he kicked me out. I was like, what the fuck? Threw all my shit. Uh, my dad called and he started screaming at him. He's like, why are you fucking kicking him out? He's like, this guy, this guy, this guy has all the potential in the world. He's fucking streaming about Freemasonry. And, uh. Yeah, it became a whole group chat thing, and he threw all my shit out. And he's like, get the fuck out. I don't want to see you till you're at the top. And uh, I couldn't argue it. I was like, you're right. Yeah. I was planning on leaving. Like, let me grab my stuff. You know, you don't have to scratch up my PC. But he, like, bubble wrapped it. He put everything in the luggage. Like, this guy did everything. And, uh, <laughs> and then he turned my room into, like, this studio. So I was like, what the fuck? Like, cause my room's the big one with the bathroom and balcony, so that was kind of weird. Like, <laughs> I guess him and his girlfriend are gonna—I well, don't know, but um, yeah. So yeah, no, that that was good because uh, he he did this once before to me, but COVID hit, so you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, I was supposed to be here a year ago, to be honest. You know, I fucked that up. But yeah, I mean, like, all my cousins and stuff like that, they want me back. They're like, don't leave, bro. You can do it from anywhere and stuff like that. But it's kind of cool having no one. I got no one, and I'm like, uh, this place is so quiet. I fucking love it. So, yeah. But will I miss Vancouver? I will miss the food. And I will miss, hmm. what will I miss? Uh, 
the get togethers with the bros new year's was fun stuff like that that was uh, some good parties yeah And it is weird to be like out of your country and like never going back. Because if I go back, I'm a failure, you know. And if I just bring him 100,000 viewer videos on YouTube, he's going to be mad at me. I'll be mad at myself. So I really need to like supercharge. Um, but I guess everything went according to plan. I saved up enough money. I kind of wish I didn't spend so much, but whatever. And... uh you're acting like USA is so different from Canada. Well, I'm not going to lie. I don't fuck with the US. <laughs> this is a big deal for me, dude. Like, Austin's a shithole. You know, like, I can make anything fun, but it's a shithole. It's, there's no beauty to this place. Like, my city is so, I used to go for drives just for fun. Middle of the night. Like, I love my city. Um,. Yeah, yeah, Austin's a shithole. I'm not going to lie, dude. Yeah. And then Miami, I would have my team on Zoom calls, so I can't do that. It's better in person for the beginning and build a good team. And then, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so what what was I saying? Um, yeah, the COVID really fucked shit up. Those lockdowns fucked shit up for me. You know what I mean? But you adapt, you overcome, and uh, here we are. Um, so far for 2023, I've done everything. The workouts, the everything I'm supposed to do. And, yeah, I'm on top of my shit. Laundry, everything. Yo, you didn't do my laundry for me. I kind of miss having a house, bitch. <laughs> um, What else? Why do people say you're bald? You got good hair. Because I'm like a narcissist, so it's like never good enough, actually. You know? But I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, I'm a really attractive dude. You know? Keep hitting the gym and shit. We got to keep this up. I'm a really attractive dude when I think about it. Because there's something about me where it's like, you're never going to see a human being like me ever again, right? Like, you guys are disposable. You guys are NPCs, whatever. Me, dude, my brain is, like, on overdrive, you know? Like, what kind of Chad reads a thousand-page book? That's kind of badass, you know? That's, like, a genius. And, um, you know, the teeth and shit, like, I'm kind of, like, I'm peaking, dude. Like, I look better than when I was 20 years old. Like, that's unreal. Um, I'm getting hot, bro. I'm getting I'm getting really sexy. I think I'm the only person who gets sexy for me. You know, I don't get sexy to go out and show people. I get sexy for me, right? Even when I, if I'm fucking, I'm fucking myself. I'm like, uh, you know what I mean? I'm getting sexy for myself. If I, you know how a man focuses on the girl when they're fucking them? I'm not joking right now. If I don't feel like her and I are both like, whoa, Zerka's in the room and he's going in. If we're not both on that kind of mental plane, I just can't get hard. And that's where I'm at. You know, like, yeah. Autosexual, I think it's called. You think of Freemasonry when you're smashing? Dude, I read that it opens portals, so sometimes I've been like... <gasps> <sighs> you know, I've read that it's it's bad. But yeah, I'm a good looking guy and I'm just haven't been trying that much. So I'm going to have like, I guess, a skincare routine and whatever the fuck and start trying again. And gym and all that. And gym is really to breathe good so I can punch hard. I need to punch hard. I haven't had a cigarette in almost like seven days. 
I'm lying. It's been five days. I think it's been five. And really, because I'm not allowed to smoke here, so I prepared myself. And uh, quitting cigarettes is like the easiest shit in the world. It's getting back on them that's tough, but I don't really, like, I don't, I haven't thought of a cigarette in like five days. Uh, I mean, the only reason I smoke cigarettes is because if I don't, I bite my nails. And like, I don't, that's a nasty habit. So I've been doing that more, but uh, yeah, I feel good in 2023. I feel like I shook off a lot of the baggage, meaning like negative thoughts. And honestly, I'm not going to be negative unless I knock someone out. Like, I'm not going to spend the whole day angry. I'm just going to knock them out. So I'm going to do it like the good old days where I just be like always happy, go lucky. And then if something's trying to ruin my day, I put it in the back of my head, wait till it confronts me, and then just knock them the fuck out. Also, this year, I don't really mind going to prison and shit. I don't mind none of that, okay? So if you talk shit to my face... I'll easily go to prison by knocking you out. I There's something about me that's like, uh, I've been holding it in on Twitch for so long, you know, and uh, I've been holding it in. And it's gone to the point where I'm like, am I like this, am I like a fake tough guy or am I knocking someone the fuck out? Am I going to reclaim who I was? Like, at some point, it's like, I've been holding it in for years. I made money on Twitch. I'm done here. It's over. I'm going to YouTube. Right? So, uh, the last time I wanted to be uh, hurt someone, it was when I was in Austin. I uh, There's a guy on my podcast who talks shit about me. Clint1717. And he was with his girlfriend. And they met me at Omni Hotel. And I just freaked out and ran up into his, like, nose-to-nose and I said, say it now, bitch, say it now. And his girlfriend freaked the fuck out and got in between us. And it became like this whole thing. And I was so close to fucking cracking him. And he's like, I'm sorry, John. And then I could tell he's like, e- people like that usually meme it and shit. But I could tell he was like, it was genuine. It was nice, you know. And I've been drunk where I say dumb shit on a podcast or whatever i've been tired and stuff so i'm like i understood that but that's the last time i had a problem with someone that i freaked out on them and uh yeah yeah he's a nice guy and we're gonna do stuff together me and clint i heard he wants to see me so i'm down but other than that have i yeah well but back then i was holding it in like i was in a hotel room quiet for hours waiting for him to come angry and why you know just handle it you don't have to be plotting and shit but yeah so this year this year this year is really about um winning with no resistance and i don't mind slowing down if it's for something I believe in, you know, and because I really lost myself as a fucking creator, like I forgot holding it in is unhealthy, bro. It's aging me, you know. Some some people need to get knocked the fuck out, and then I'll make the apology video. But yeah, and I'm saying that because Austin, Texas, is filled with like assholes. It's just people who get drunk and cocky and stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah. Anyways, um. That's that. I guess what 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 I was giving such good advice. Why did you decelerate me? Um personal three top most influential philosophers, thinkers. Plato Really Christ first. Plato Unless you're one of those guys who think, oh, they got Neoplatonic ideas and then they put it into the Bible, whatever. So Christ, Plato, and um, who else? Mm, Foucault. <laughs> no. Um, Jordan Peterson. Marx. Look, I'm not going to lie. Karl Marx was not that smart. Okay, it's not that smart to break down that whoever has owns the machinery 
owns the system. Like it's, <laughs> it's not that genius of a revelation, dude. <laughs> I don't think Marx was that great. Yeah. Plus, here's why Marxism's fucking retarded, okay? Here's why, okay? And this is going to ruin every single kind of uh, system you could think of. But Marxism is defeated when you ask people how they feel about McDonald's workers who try and get you an ice cream cone. You know what I mean by that? Like the whole argument ends right there. When like Marx will never ever talk about the average worker as fucking retard IQ. They're literally cattle. They're the dumbest people on earth. And dude, I failed every class and I'm a fucking genius compared to the fucking average guy. Are you kidding? Um yeah, the like Marx doesn't touch on the topic of retardation in society. Like humans are stupid. Uh, they're literally fucking retarded. Like, it's so weird that you think... When when people say, you know, the working class, they mean... What what they mean by the working class is they, they mean the people who must be led by a greater mind or they kill themselves and their neighbors. They burn shit down. They pitchfork. Like, they're animals. And I'm, I fight for the working class men, but... I'm not stupid. They're fucking animals. Like they, if they're confused, they run up and start killing everyone. You know, like <laughs> that's why, that's why the capitalist I have a little more respect for. Because when the capitalist is confused, he doesn't kill people. He kills people for profit. But when the working class is confused, oh, the power went out. <laughs> they just start fucking before there's even a food shortage. They start killing each other for toilet paper and shit. And, like, Marx doesn't ever want to talk about how fucking stupid people are and how... <laughs> yeah. It's just... It, it's political, though, you know? Like, Marx knows how stupid the average person is. But, you know, his is a political movement. Uh, appreciate you, Knut. Oh, we're just shitting on Marxists right now. And uh, are you in Austin, Knut? Yo, Knut, you see fucking Miskiff <laughs> try to bench press three plates? Well, he did it once, right? So that's impressive. But then he almost dies. No, I have this mustache because I'm a fascist. Yeah. You don't you don't like it? Like I just one day realized fusing nationalism with something as collective as socialism. What's more collective than nationalism and what's more collective than socialism? This is like the perfect fusion, dude. That's the perfect system, right? That's how humans are designed to live. And then I realize I'm joking. Like, I'm totally joking. Yeah. Wait, did he host me? Oh, thank you. But Nazis weren't socialists, John. No, they were socialists on steroids. That's socialism on steroids, right? When you had a supercharger to like uh, the Ubermensch nationalism, the Superman. Did I say it right? I don't know because he here's the thing. Here's the thing, dude. Okay, and this this is kind of weird to talk about online because I don't want to die. <laughs> But like a lot of the media we grew up with as children was based on World War II. And it's like, bro, I'm Albanian, dude. You know, I'm I'm half Chinese. I want to see some Chinese movies as well. And so anyways, yeah. 
Um, but uh, how do I feel about Germans? Don't they say Merkel is like the granddaughter of Hitler? Like Google her face. I'm starting to believe in this shit because they're all like ruling class royalty who marries into each other and pretends that they're like stakeholder capitalists, but really they're royalty. Can you believe that? Yeah, I know. The interesting thing about World War II is when you realize it's like funded by American industrialists, Wall Street, and royal families of Europe. And then you're like, wait, so what are they afraid of? Like, what do they all have in common? What they all have in common is that they're fucking royalty and they're afraid of us, you know, pitchfork mobsters. Like, it's not really... Is it, Was it really... There's movies that talk about it being like a... Fo um. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know. Anyone, Anytime someone says World War II, like, that has a special place in my heart. Because, listen, if, if you don't... If you, if you want to be happy in life, just buy World War II models of tanks and shit and paint them. I got a buddy who does that, and I was like, dude, I'm thinking of living on an island and doing this shit full time. Because World War II was the one time war was not that digitalized back then. It was very mobilized, right? And so it was the one time it looked like Warhammer. Let me know if I'm getting canceled. But it looked like Warhammer, World War II. There's a lot of horses too. It's like World War One, But it looked like Warhammer with how much how much equipment there was back then. Nowadays, it's like what? Um, ideological subversion and some air, air superiority. Like... Nowadays, war is, let's make your children gay. <laughs> now that's the, yeah. So anyways. <laughs> but back then it was like, boo, 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 you know, it was crazy. And so, yeah. Which I'm not going to lie, guys. The reason why you see LGBT everywhere, right? And I think I can say this since I have enough gay friends where I have enough cover. I have enough cover to look look like I'm not homophobic, you know? I've got just enough just enough dense trees around me, right? That's what I call gay people. I call them trees because I'm homophobic. So now check this out, okay? This is a hard wood. Gay people rule the world, okay? As a minority Albanian refugee... I'm a real minority. Gay people like literally rule the fucking world. Why why are we pretending like they're a bigger minority than Zerka? Are you kidding me? There's people who want my fucking head. Like there's they got their flag everywhere. They won. Okay? That's domination. <laughs> okay. You know what no one ever talks about is Gay people don't really care about having their flag everywhere. Like, they're not, they don't really care. Like, you can't just judge them on a whole pride parade, you know? Like, most of them don't give a fuck. Have you noticed that? Like, most of them don't really give a fuck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but what I think of gay people, I love my chat. Next. <clears throat> Twenty twenty three is going great for me and it's gonna go bad for you because you're doing the same things. That's not good, chat. You know, that's not good. I want you to go hungry in twenty twenty three. I want you to remember what it's like to be hungry. You know? I don't think your stomach should always have food in it. Because it's really what what's happening when you're digesting food. You're in an inflammatory state and you're aging, you know. A lot of people don't understand that aging is digesting food. It's not actually time passing. It has nothing to do with time. That's why everyone ages so differently and everyone looks so different going through the years. It has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with years passing. 
It's all about like what you're consuming and how much stress it's putting on your body. Some people can get away with some junk food and stuff, but a lot of you guys are aging. Like, especially these guys who in my chat will be like, "Oh, I got a high metabolism, so I can get away with shit foods." Bro, you look old. Like you're aging from these foods. Like it's it's not all about how you're digesting it. Like, bro, you're getting old because of these f- disgusting foods. And um, you got to clean this shit up, right? Because the one thing you miss the most is the clearness. If you're feeling fogged, you're probably digesting some nasty shit. I feel clear in my mind. I feel so fucking clear. I feel like my skin is clear. And I feel like I can get away with um, anything right now. Like I can just drop the N-word and I can get away with it. This chat's a bunch of, I eat an entire ginger and, okay, I don't know anything about ginger, but (sighs) it's not about what foods you put into your body. It's about what foods you take out. Because if you're just eating good, but you still have these bad habits, same as smoking, really. And uh, I'm going to smoke a lot less this year, right? Did Slicker go live? I'll check that out soon. I'm just not done saying why i'm better than everyone here one in the chat if um you're gonna have a strong gear and one if you're not just saying it you know what i mean that's the cool thing about going live is you have to do it or else people clown you you know even for the small stuff and you got to remember guys okay if failure doesn't come with an amnesia pill, you're fucking retarded. Like, any if you failed today and you didn't go to the gym, you didn't do anything, amnesia. Just forget about it, and then you restart tomorrow. And just wind back the calendar, and who gives a fuck? And that's how you win, okay? That's why I tell my clients when I was training them, and they got into pretty, they got, they hit their goals. Sometimes you just got to take an amnesia pill and pretend it didn't happen. What is your opinion on faith and works? What do you think you are saved by? Thought, meditation, and prayer are talked about in Masonic literature, in morals and dogma. The ruling class of billionaires who print money, the guys who have billions from even Scientology, they all talk about thought, meditation, and prayer. And if you really want to take it far, write it down. But dude... The word, even in your head. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. But you're going to see it in your mind for a few seconds. An obsessed person never stops seeing it. And as gay as it sounds, manifestation's too real, bro. If I say you manifest what you think about, nobody believes me. But if I say every fucking misery and depression you have is because you're thinking about it, you go, holy shit, I did bring that to myself. The moment you realize most humans wish for things to harm them is the moment you go, oh, that shit is real. Yeah, you can manifest. Because when I say manifest, people are like, I'm thinking of a Ferrari. No, you're a fucking alcoholic. You think of fucking liquor, you fucking retard. And so when you realize 99% of your thoughts are to damage you, that's the devil, okay? That's why there's you who you are when you wake up and then these these impulses you have to ruin your life. I don't need a cigarette. I need liquor. I need this. I need an argument. I need those impulses. They're foreign. They are, You could have those impulses till you're 40 years old and they still feel foreign. Why do they feel foreign? Because they're from demons, and the, these demons are talked about in these books. They're they're from the invisible world, a world we can't see. That's why you feel bad when you do something wrong. And here's the, here's something that's really underrated for 2023. You know, doing the right thing is really underrated because everyone thinks doing the right thing is doing the right thing for you. Doing the right thing doesn't mean your life got better from it. 
You have to delete that from your mind. You have to delete from your mind that doing the right thing is something that pluses you. Okay? A lot of times it's not going to plus you. Right? It might buff you, but no one's going to know about it. If you did the right thing, nobody knows but you. Very few know. Sometimes one other person knows and you have an intimate connection where, uh, where you know, you guys go, oh, shit, I'm on the right path. But do the right thing. Don't do the right thing because I'm telling you. Do the right thing because it's actually hard. It's nothing harder than that. Doing the right thing is really hard, actually. Because here's how your mind works. You do one right thing and ten wrong things. Like, you always try and balance it out because you're a fucking pedophile. And it's like... You spent your whole life trying to learn things. And you watch successful people. They're really just unlearning. The scariest thing is realizing a genius is more primitive. A 15-year-old scores more goals usually than an adult male because he's more primitive in his thinking. Being more primitive is not a bad thing at all. At all. Being more primitive is good. You have all this knowledge, right? You watch TikTok all day and interesting stuff. You have all this knowledge and you're a fucking loser. So how how is knowledge good for you? And knowledge is only good if you have space to really absorb it. But you don't. You have liberal propaganda you need to un- unprogram. You have to rewire your brain. And you're going to be like, yo, I don't know, because when I rewire it, I sound like a grandpa, John. Dude, that primitive mind is actually the real you. Like You're going there whether you like it or not. You know, if you have this thought where you're like, man, I really believe in this fucking shit. You can fucking resist for years, but you're headed there anyway. So get a head start. The primitive mind is like so OP, right? There is when you watch an MMA fighter win every single fight, you see them at their more primitive state where they're just kind of doing the basics. And you're like, huh. <laughs> it's not the spinning back kick that they learn. It's not everything they learned. When you're primitive, you're kind of remastering the basics in front of the world. Right? Because in masonry, they actually talk about God being so genius, it's actually primitive. Meaning you can't get... For example, look at this. Before evil and good, yin and yang, sad and happy, there's just being. Meaning no suffering. No highs and lows at all. That's a more primitive state. Yours is a more divided state. That's why you have all those thoughts that give you anxiety and stuff. Are those thoughts really making you smarter? No. You know, that's why reprogramming and unlearning. Oh, when you unlearn, you feel weightless, dude. You feel so weightless. I guess the best argument for this would be is a college student who knows, like, you know, they just finished their, let's say, bachelor's. Are they smart people? Or are they in debt? Are they fucking losers? Yeah, they're fucking losers. They're fucking losers, man. And it's like, I don't think they went to school to be, I don't think they started off as losers, to be honest. But you see a more primitive YouTuber, sometimes even, you know, plumber, electrician, their lives are kind of awesome. 
and they make money. And you're like, I valued knowledge my whole life even when it destroyed my life. How you bal- how the fuck are you doing? You you mean you respect knowledge so much that even if it destroys your life, you go, oh, at least I learned something? What the fuck, bro? You get one life. What are you doing? So when I say being more primitive, being more primitive doesn't mean you're a caveman. It just means sharper with your basics. You know, your basics that make you happy, make you money, make you this, right? You don't see mastery without the basics. Basics are everything. And uh, I've spent so much time trying to find a different way, you know. Like, what if I read the book like this? What if I just read the fucking book, bro? Mm Mm-hmm. How do I get the triangle people to stop following me? Kaz, nobody's following you because nobody knows who the fuck you are. Uh, The ruling class, if they followed you, then we won. Okay? Because they're about to die of boredom. They, We won. That's it. That's it. You know, that's game over for for them. Um, Because Kaz, let me tell you something, okay? You're like triple vaxxed and you look like you're like, you don't look healthy to me. You're like triple vaxxed and that's what you get for um, believing in uh, aliens and whatever the fuck. Okay. You're like, you got a lot of, Hey, you guys action in chat right now. It's like a lot of, Hey, you guys. That's a lot of triple vax. You you really think there's no ruling class? You think it's triangle people? You got a lot of hey you guys energy in chat. And uh, you should get a booster though. You should get a booster so I can, so you can put me out of my fucking misery from listening to your fucking retard claims. Cause uh, you got like woman IQ, bro. And that's how I feel. And um, shout out Gorilla Mind. Use code John. Get 10% off Gorilla Mind products. 